yes. Uh, also, we will record this uh, lecture. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Great. Hopefully, by now you can see my slides. All yes, right. yes, we can. All right. Thanks again for the introduction. Um, today, I'm going to talk about our work on ISCA 23, uh, titled Enabling High Performance Debugging for Variational Quantum Algorithms Using Compressed Sensing. This is a collaborative work with Kun Liu from CMU. Now he's uh, joining Yale in Professor Ying Shanting's group and my advisor Swami Tenu at UW Medicine. So let's begin by taking a look at one of the issues we are facing in the current NISC era and motivating our main subject today, which is variational quantum algorithms. Um, so to execute a quantum circuit or a quantum algorithm, of our interest, we usually get a distribution or a set of samples of bit strings from the circuit. Uh, as denoted on the slide, we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So in the ideal case, our circuit or algorithm should output a concentrated uh, output uh, so that we, we get a sense of what we are uh, looking for. But for current contemporary hardware uh, that we are we are using now, it's usually not the case. We get a distribution of bit strings that are usually uh, undesirable for most quantum algorithms, and they require accurate readouts. And these noise or arrows, along with other limitations of basic devices, like limiting the number of qubits, hinder their practical usability. So what if we can transfer transform these uh, bit string dis distributions to expectation values instead? We see that uh, on the you know, for the ideal case, we get an average cost value of zero point five. But for uh, this very noisy distribution, the cost value is actually pretty close to the ideal case, um, yeah. and this is this is to some extent acceptable if an algorithm can take advantage of a single value and tolerate this little noise. Well, variational quantum algorithms do exactly that. So variational quantum algorithms uh, are a class of iterative heuristic algorithms that are very promising uh, for practical usage in the NISC era. They are comprised of a parameterized quantum circuit and a classical optimizer. In each iteration, the parameterized quantum circuit uh, prepares this bit string distribution. And then using the problem Hamiltonian, it calculates the average cost function value. This value will be fit into the classical optimizer, uh, who will use this value to who will minimize this value and update the parameters in the circuit. And this iterative process will continue until we get a convergence. So that we um, we will find the local minima of our cost function, and um, usually that's the um, ground state of our problem Hamiltonian, um, and with that ground state, we we can uh, transform back to our problem and get the solution we seek. <laughs> but debugging virtual quantum algorithm is very challenging, so. When we are debugging classical programs, we can print out variables or use a debugger to easily inspect the intermediate state of a program execution. But it's no longer the case for quantum programs due to, due to the intrinsic properties of quantum computing, as well as current hardware's limitations. First, there is oh, first there uh, the first challenge is destructive and statistical grades. When we measure a quantum state, the state collapses, and generally we cannot derive the original quantum state without re preparing it. And there is the no cloning theorem. We cannot copy an arbitrary unknown quantum state. Besides, there is uncertainty introduced by hardware errors. These all together make debugging and tuning quantum algorithms very challenging. It is even more troublesome for variational quantum algorithms. 
if we take a look at this uh, VQA workflow again, we see that we need to deal with their multiple components and uh, optimize the retrieval heuristic in nature. If any one of the components is not correctly configured, the VQA may not perform as well as it could, and it's difficult to figure out really where the issue is, or if we are just unlucky with the heuristic algorithm. Fortunately, there is a solution to it, that is to look at the complete cost function landscape. So while optimizing a variational quantum algorithm, we can record cost of function values in each iteration and derive loss function curve as shown on the side. But cost function values from the optimization path alone contain very little information. A complete landscape of the cost function, on the other hand, provides a bird's eye view. We can know the cost of function values and other useful properties, not only along the optimization path, but also around it, or in fact, anywhere of our interest. Such a landscape is derived by varying the, the parameter values of the circuits. This process uh, is called research, and having such a landscape has many benefits. So first, we have almost complete knowledge about this heuristic process. So we can easily know really uh, where how how this uh, heuristic process uh, is going, and we can with uh, this visual uh, visualization we can find bugs both visually and numerically. We can also use the landscape to correctly configure many components of our VQA, as we will talk about later. And last, the, uh, the landscape is specific to each problem instance and is invariant to optimization attempts. That means with a single computation of a landscape, we can try however many optimization on it as we want. However, deriving landscapes is inefficient. Doing a grid search is extremely expensive, as it means ex executing the circuit with every set of parameters on the grid. For the landscape to be formative, the grid is usually very dense, meaning a lot of parameter sets need to be evaluated. For, for the landscape shown on the side, we have 10 to the four pixels, which costs about $1,000 with MBM's pay-as-you-go pricing. So to summarize the motivation we have talked about so far, um, debugging wiki is, is complicated and slow. Fortunately, cost function landscapes are helpful, but they are expensive to derive. So the next question is, can we really debug wiki is by efficiently deriving wiki landscapes? Well, the answer is, of course, yes. Otherwise, I will be talking about this. So this, we will need a technique called compression in, in signal processing. For any signal, um, or really any data we have uh, shown on the left, we can treat it as a so-called, we can consider it as in the so-called time domain and utilize a Fourier transform or uh, discrete cosine transform, something like that, to convert to convert the signal or data to the frequency domain shown on the right. So we see on the screen that uh, when the uh, the data in the time domain is periodic, the more periodic it is in the time domain, the less information it contains in the frequency domain. For example, this uh, kind of very very periodic curve on the left uh, has only one really informative data point on the right. Whereas this this random uh, this random data on the left has very dense information in the frequency domain. So this motivates us that if our landscape is periodic in the time domain, it's is periodic enough we can use Fourier transform uh, and to get rid of the unnecessary information in the frequency domain and convert it back. So this is a set of images uh, from the compression paper by Candice, Rundberg, and Tal, where they convert the original uh, image into the frequency domain and get rid of most of the information, which are quite unnecessary. 
and reconstruct it back. We can hardly tell the difference by our naked eye. So we develop Oscar, a software to uh, compression thing based cost landscape reconstruction. Uh, I didn't create the name, just <laughs> say. So a software tool that enables high performance debugging of VQA workflows using compression scene. So it works as follows. First, we pick random parameters, and then we set those parameters into the quantum circuits and execute the circuits. Then we calculate cost, cost function values to generate down a uh, sample landscape. And we feed this sample landscape to compression scene routine that we can construct and we can construct the complete landscape. And with just five to 10% of the samples, we can accurately approximate the original landscape. And this is uh, using an embarrassing parallel sampling protocol uh, as we'll talk about soon. But I must also know that there was a concurrent work by Fontana et al that also explores uh, this, this uh, similar workflow that use compression scene to reconstruct landscapes. Their work, however, is um, focusing more focuses more on the uh, direct side, and is not as large scale and not um, didn't consider as many contacts as we have. So we we must we 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 can know that uh, the first three stages of our approach are completely independent. Um, because the random parameters are independent of each other. That means uh, the th first three stages are embarrassingly parallelizable. And that means we can use uh, multiple QPU sources to derive our sample landscapes. Um, this, this means, uh, but for uh, multiple QPU sources, they may have different noise levels. And to deal with that, we propose noise compensation model. So we use the cost value derived from QPU1 and QPU2 as a training set and train a linear regression model. Before the reconstruction, this model will transform cost values of QPU2s to QPU1s. Uh, in this way, we can regard points from QPU2 as if they are all coming from QPU1. So this doesn't uh, eliminate noise. This transforms the noise signature from QPU1 to, sorry, from QPU2 to QPU1. And the result is very satisfy satisfying as we, uh, we can evaluate this parallel reconstruction on different combinations of QPU1 and QPU2. So here, uh, QPU1 and QPU2 are noise simulations of different noise levels. And the axis uh, is the ratio between utilizing QPU1 and QPU2. So, 20% uh, and 80% means 20% of points are coming from QPU1 and 80% are coming from QPU2. For y-axis, it's uh, the normalized, normalized uh, it's, it's our uh, error metric between QPU1 landscape and uh, parallel reconstruction landscape. We see that uh, for the blue bar, it's without the noise compensation model and uh, we, the, the difference between the two landscapes are pretty large unless we completely use QPU1's points for our reconstruction. But with our noise compensation model, which is the, green, uh, the orange bar, we have a very low arrow for uh, basically all combinations of sample points. But we, I, I must also know that uh, this is for noisy simulation. Uh, we also perform experiments on real hardware. And since the real noise model is more complicated, uh, this noise compensation model is works at not as, as great, uh, but still it's uh, beneficial. OK. I think uh, by now we have uh, completely went through our, our approach, let's see some results. So here on the left, we, we have a simulated uh, QA landscape for MaxCut with three regular graphs. On the right, we have the same problem, also QA from Google's real experimental data. 
<clears throat> and we see that uh, it's hardly it, it's it's very very close that we can hardly uh, distinguish between the original landscape and the reconstruction landscape with our naked eyes. For Google's uh, uh, Google's data, it has more noise, and we can kind of distinguish between them. And we also need to use a higher sampling fraction. So, before we jump into into uh, more results, I want to talk about our figure of merit. Sampling fraction is the fraction of random points to perform comparison. Scene. So, uh, it's the percentage of points we are sampling from the original landscape. For example, if uh, as before, if we uh, have 10 to the fourth grid points on our landscape, then a 1% sampling means we, we only need to uh, execute 100 of the points. And the arrow metric we use is NRMSE. It's a normalized reduced mean square arrow, a scale invariant error metric to measure the difference between the original landscape and the reconstructed landscape for a diverse site of instances. Uh, this figure is also from Google's data. It has uh, three problems. And since it has a very high noise from the real device, we need to use a higher sampling fraction for the error to be low. So for our experiments, we use a total of 200 problem instances of QAA to evaluate the landscape reconstruction accuracy. To generate the ground truth, we perform a dense grid search to obtain the true landscape. By executing either 5,000 home circuits for uh, one layer QAA or 32,000 home circuits for two layer QAA, uh, corresponding to the grid points to the same set of grid points on the landscape. Each circuit is executed using C-vector simulation. <clears throat> and we can see that um, from, from the plots that reconstruction error decreases steadily when we increase the sampling fraction as expected, as expected. And it's true for both the ideal simulation and the noisy case. Um, the accuracy to our surprise is also independent of the number of qubits, which is very uh, satisfying. And so far, we have looked at uh, only QA with MaxCut. You may wonder if this works with uh, other variational quantum algorithms, uh, say we could use with UCC SD answers or with other problems. And here we have a table showing the landscape periodicity for a diverse set of problems and answers we have looked at. And just to, as a reminder, uh, we are looking at, we will be looking at numbers that preserve 99% of the signal energy uh, in, the, uh, in the time domain. So basically that means how many data in the, in the how, how much data in the frequency domain frequency domain is needed to represent 99% of the data in the time domain on the left. And we see that for basically all of them, the landscape is periodic now. So the um, coefficients in the frequency domain is very, very sparse. It's uh, 10 to the many zeros uh, is needed in the frequency domain to represent 99% of the data in the time domain, which is our original uh, landscape data. That means we create landscapes generally, in general, are sparse in the frequency domain and can be accurately reconstructed using compressors. So how are the landscape, uh, how are they useful? Um, so first I want to talk about this use case of configuring optimizers. Um, as shown in the, in the, in the um, workflow here, before running WQAs, we need to choose the optimizer. Uh, we need to choose their hyperparameters like learning rate for your bag. Uh, but once this optimization process fails, we need to change the configuration and start over. 
this is very expensive and it's it's uh, really pipelined and it cannot be executed in parallel. Um, so we propose this idea to reduce the cost of configure uh, the cost of configuration with uh, reconstruction landscapes. So the figure on the slide shows an example comparison between optimizing on a interpolated reconstructed landscape and with actual circuit executions. And uh, both are by Adam, as uh, both use Adam as the optimizer. <clears throat> and we see that the optimizer paths are identical. We cannot really tell. Um, that means that uh, that means we can use this optimization on interpolated reconstructed landscape to imitate the actual optimization with circuit actual circuit executions. And it turns out that uh, once we have the landscape, this interpolation is very cheap to derive, and it takes nearly just barely an instant to to get the optimization process done. Where for the actual circuit execution, it's very costly. So our method allows reruns of optimizations with very little overhead after reconstructing the landscape. Thus, we can choose and configure optimizers based on their performance on the reconstruction landscape. And we can also kind of tell the optimizer behavior only with reconstructed landscapes uh, before running actual optimizations. So this right figure, uh, we use two different optimizers, Adam and Kobayla, on a Richardson Z ZNE mitigated landscape. And we see that uh, gradient-based optimizers like Adam can get stuck, while der derivative-free uh, optimizers like Kobayla converges to the minimum. In this way, we can check the performance optimizer configurations with little cost before running on the real quantum device. To evaluate our idea, we define the distance between two optimization paths. Say the uh, red curve is the optimization path by circuit execution, and the green curve is the optimization path on reconstructed landscape. Our goal is to use optimization on the reconstructed landscape to imitate the optimization with the actual circuit execution. Um, and these two curves start from the same initial point and convert to different places. We observe that uh, if the converged points are close, they tend to have similar optimization paths. So usually they, their uh, optimization paths path are uh, uh, very close to each other as well. But sometimes uh, due to, based on, depending on the reconstruction uh, landscape, depending on the instance, or the interpolation method used, we may have certain optimization queries uh, not at the same location as the, the true circuit execution. But the ending results, the ending points are very close. So we see that uh, on the right figure that um, the Euclidean distance between the ending points of our imitated optimization and the, the actual circuit execution based uh, optimization is very low, which shows that uh, optimization on the reconstruction landscapes can indeed imitate the actual optimization. This is also barely affected by noise as we can see in, in this figure. Uh, the second use case that I want to talk about is that we can use reconstruct reconstructed landscapes to help us benchmark error mitigation methods. Error mitigation methods are essential for most contemporary quantum devices, but deciding which mitigation method to use is not straightforward and efficient. We need to deal with varying noise levels, different characteristics of quantum devices, and etc. So we propose this idea to use reconstructed landscapes to help us benchmark error mitigation methods for VQAs. Here is an example. Let's say we have two mitigation methods. One is uh, Richardson ZNE, another is linear ZNE. If we can, we have landscapes 
uh, we can see that linear landscape is smoother, while the Richardson landscape is corrupted with salt and pepper noise. We can draw the conclu conclusion that um, linear is probably better uh, just, just from uh, visually looking at it. But we can, uh, so this, th these landscapes are uh, the, the original true landscapes. But what if we use Oscar to, to sample uh, a few points and reconstruct landscapes? We see that um, on the below landscapes, uh, it reflects the preserved features of the original ones. So the linear one is also smooth, while the Richardson one also has uh, some noise. So how do we how do we draw the conclusion numerically? Um, we can use metrics of our interest and measure the reconstructed landscape. Here we use second order derivative as an example. A second order derivative on a landscape is commonly used to evaluate the roughness. As shown in the figure, second order derivative share the similar pattern among original landscapes and reconstructed landscapes. That is, the second order derivative of Richardson is higher than that of the linear uh, by a great amount, which matches the actual case as shown in the uh, right figure, where the linear landscape is smoother. In this way, we can benchmark noise mitigation methods with metrics of our interest. And this is actually true for uh, a for quite a lot of um, metrics. As we can see, the second derivative variance of gradient as well as variance of the landscape, they all preserve um, key features of the original landscape. So basically, we want to, we want to see if uh, the unmitigated Richardson and linear share a similar pa pattern between the original landscape and the reconstruction landscape. And we see it's actually uh, the case. So, so we can use this data to decide, um, well, what noise mitigation method we want to use, as well as perhaps decide other uh, configurations in our WQAs. So I think um, to best dem demonstrate our software to Oscar, uh, let's do a, do a code demo. Um, so Oscar is available uh, on GitHub, um, and while this opens, uh, while this uh, QR source, QR code. So I will just uh, walk through our get started um, notebook. So, so in Oscar we use um, we use. Uh, a predefined resolution as well as a, a set of um, parameter bounds to define uh, a landscape. So here we set the resolution. So so here we we are going to to do a one layer QA. So we have two parameters, and we set the resolution for each parameter to be sixty four, while the bounds to be minus pi over four to pi over four for beta and zero to pi over two for gamma. And um, Oscar supports uh, a diverse set of uh, executors. So the most commonly used one would be a custom executor where you pass in a function that takes in a set of parameters and return a float as a, a cost function value. Um, but we also, We also um, support Qiskit for, for users uh, who are in favor of Qiskit. Um, and we support it both its, so here we define a max cut problem with three regular graphs um, and get its uh, Hamiltonian operator. And uh, we set the number of qubits to be 10. We support both the, uh, Both the the new QA and VQE uh, interface, as well as the old deprecated one. 
Um, so by fitting the algorithm and the operator into the sophisticated ex executor from Oscar, uh, we can use it to, to run points uh, on, on our landscape. So here we first want to reconstruct the landscape. Uh, we are using the Kiskit executor. We set the sampling fraction to be 1 over 16. And this is a, a random seed for sampling on um, uh, sampling the landscape points. And once we have this sample landscape, we can use a reconstructor to, to reconstruct the full landscape. Um, Currently, our reconstructors are implemented with convex pi. Uh, in the future, we want to support a scipy based uh, reconstructor that avoids uh, avoids the building an exponentially large uh, for cosine discrete cosine transform matrix. Uh, exponential in the term uh, in terms of number of parameters, not in terms of number of qubits. So it's still independent of the number of qubits. And we can, after reconstructing the landscape, we can use this, uh, this function to plot it out. Since it's, uh, it has two parameters, we can um, plot it as a 2D figure nicely, as a heat map nicely. Um, we can first uh, we can we can uh, before it finishes we can take a look at the actual landscape by circuit execution first. Uh, this I preserved this out of cell because this will take um, several minutes, as opposed to basically it takes sixteen times this value, as opposed to like twenty five seconds. And also remember that uh, we are only dealing with ten qubits here. If we increase the number of qubits um, is going to be exponentially more difficult to simulate uh, our landscape. Well, our sampling fraction is still independent of the number of qubits. Okay, we see that this is our reconstructed landscape, and this is our our um, exact landscape. We can really see that they are they are. Uh, super close to each other. And landscapes can be easily saved and loaded from file. And then I'm going to show uh, the first use case that uh, we can we can configure our optimizer um, with the reconstructed landscape. So here we we do uh, an interpolation uh, on the reconstructed landscape. And after doing an interpolation, we transform the discrete landscape grid into a continuous function so that our optimizer can query any point uh, within our, our bonds. And here we uh, use the NL opt optimizer, uh, Bobica, to run the optimization. And we set the initial points, the bonds to be the same as uh, the landscape bonds, uh, some hyperparameters to make sure it converges. And uh, this is the result after doing the optimization. So this is the initial point we are starting. And Bobica does an initial interpolation to figure out which direction it wants to go. And um, after six to one evaluations, it gets to, uh, to it converges to the, the local minima. And we can also use our pre previously defined Qiskit executor uh, for generating the points. So this interpolated uh, executor is an approximation. So first, we are using the reconstructed landscape, which is an approximation to the original landscape, and then we are doing an interpolation between the uh, discrete points. That's a second layer of approximation, and this is uh, complete. The exact. So first thing we notice is it's going to take a while. So even though we only have 60 evaluations here, it's taking uh, like 0, uh, 0.02 seconds for interpolated landscape. And it's taking 3.5 seconds for the actual optimization. 
imagine how it will become when we have a when we have 30 qubits or uh, hundreds of evaluations or if we want to repeat this optimization process hundreds thousands of times we can compare the two um, optimization curves and we see that they are indeed very close to each other and we see the uh, optimal 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 parameters reported and the optimal value reported are very close to each other as well so that means um, by optimizing on the interpolated landscape we get a fairly accurate imitation of the actual optimization while greatly saving uh, the cost so with with this um, with with the, with this saving we can actually enable uh, a grid search on hyperparameter of the optimizers so here we use uh, hyperparameter grid to define a set of uh, hyperparameters we want to train for an optimizer. Um, here we choose uh, the initial point to, to start from five different locations, and we give the optimizer a maximum function evaluation of 10, 30, and 50. And we set its uh, hyperparameter, the zero back or initial step to be uh, three values respectively. We also can try another optimizer. So this is Kobayla. Uh, this is Bobaika. And compare how uh, compare their performance. So we, we use this uh, hyperparameter twinner class from Oscar and fit in this configuration. It will run all these uh, configurations uh, for all possible combinations of these configurations in merely two seconds. So if we are if we were using the actual circuit execution, this is going to take um, at least a few minutes. And it's going to be worse when the number of qubits is, is higher. So usually, if it's going to take uh, a day or two to 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 do the grid search, if we have the landscape, we can still do it in two seconds. Okay, and after um, running the tuner and deriving the results, we can process the results. Uh, basically, we get so so from the um, executor, we get a trace. Uh, we got a say a, a trace object that contains the optimal parameters, the optimal value, and uh, the trace of the optimizer and the time it takes. And um, as well as the original result from the optimizer. So Oscar supports uh, optimizers with now opt, um, Qiskit optimizer, and um, Taking the future SciPy optimizers. Um, also, there is something called Scikit, uh, Scikit Quant. We also support that. And um, yeah, after getting the results, we can uh, we can we can supply a custom function or from Oscar the result metrics. We can use the built-in functions to process the results. And uh, here we use arg sort to get the mo the top performing uh, optimizer configurations and print them out. So we see that, okay, initial point, which initial point, which uh, function evaluations, uh, which hyperparameters are the best for our particular case. So this only takes two seconds. Okay, so that's that's our demo. And um, I want to conclude by, uh, OK, so what we have talked so far, we have talked about OSCAR, which is uh, a tool based on compressing that can accurately reconstruct WikiWi landscapes using only 5 to 10%, or even sometimes 1% of the samples needed uh, for deriving the original landscape. And since this um, sampling process is embarrassingly parallel, this enables parallel reconstruction from different QPUs. 
And we also propose a noise compensation model to deal with different noise levels or different noise signatures from multiple QPUs. And we talk about two use cases. First is to configure and debug the uh, optimizer. <clears throat> and we also see in the live demo that it can be done in an instant. Even the um, grid search over multiple hyperparameters can be done in an instant. And we also talk about how we can use reconstruct landscapes to benchmark and to noise mitigation methods. And the use of reconstructed landscapes actually is, is really beyond what we have talked about. For example, we can um, twin the penalty factor for constraint uh, problems, or we can, we can choose the number of shots in shotted measurements for a limited budget scenario. So this is, I think it's only limited by our imagination. And with that, I want to uh, conclude my talk and thank you. Uh, let's uh, thank you, Tianyi, for the great talk uh, and, and uh, uh, excellent uh, lab code demo. Uh, I, I really like that part. So I, I think uh, uh, now we're entering uh, 